Welcome to Apple IIe Brain Transplant. So let's take a look at this Platinum IIe. And what do we got? An extended 80 column card. We have a Microsoft Soft card and a Micro Drive Turbo, a disk controller card for uh, five and a quarter floppies, and a PC transporter. A rare item which um, gave you an IBM compatible 8088 inside an Apple II. So you could see that it has a drive connector on the back and uh, this gray drive on the bottom is a five and a quarter inch trans drive and it also accepts Apple three and a half inch drives. Um, so it's daisy chained on the back which you can see, yeah, there on the bottom. One thing to notice about the PC transporter is how it uses Apple hardware. The keyboard is connected to the card um, and it has a cable to the um, actual Apple IIe keyboard. There's actually a board that fits on top of the keyboard connector that goes to both the card and the keyboard. And then the speaker is um, connected to the card and the output can go back to the speaker. And the video uses the four pin jack in the back for video to um, put the IBM video onto the Apple video bus for the composite out. Now, I believe it's a monochrome out or a CGA compatible display. Also notice that there is a daughter board for RAM chips. It comes with 768K of RAM, which gives you 640K for the IBM PC side. That RAM is also usable under Prodos, so you can have a 768K RAM disk. Okay, we're booting the Apple IIe. This is a DOS 3.3 System Master from 83, loading integer basic into memory. And here's the catalog. So integer basic is from the original Apple II, but on Apple IIe's you had to load it from DOS. And now I'm going to demonstrate one of the files on this disk, Penny Arcade by Bill Budge from 1979. Okay, so these are the instructions, and this is the Apple version of Pong, and uh, this type of high-res animation was state-of-the-art in 1981, to show the title page like that. And you had bumper pool, hockey, scramble, and tennis. This is the listing of Penny Arcade. And surprisingly, it is a short listing. Okay. Now we're going to also show that we could run Prodos from a floppy disk. Nineteen ninety version of Prodos. And that's the system utilities disk, and I'm just gonna exit to basic. So here is Copy2 Plus, and what I'm going to show you is the PC Transporter installation disk, the three and a half inch floppy version. It also came with five and a quarter inch floppies. So slot five drive two is a hard disk. Um, so slot seven drive two is the three and a half floppy attached to the PC transporter. So the volume is AEPC and that is the catalog that's used to install the software for PC transporter. And slot seven drive one is the RAM of the PC transporter, which gives you a 768K RAM disk. Okay, slot five drive one is the micro drive turbo and the PC transporter software is installed in that AEPCT directory and it has subdirectories for drivers. Okay. Now you have a Prodos menu with an option to run the PC transporter software. 
And when you see loading from disk, it is in IBM mode now, and it is starting MS-DOS from the C drive, which is an, a ProDOS file that contains a hard disk volume. So now we are on that C drive, and we can do directories of the floppy disk in drive A. So I put an MS-DOS disk in drive A, 720K, or a 360K floppy in drive B, which is the trans drive. So I'm going to demonstrate a basic program. So this is a GW basic. And that's how you start basic with a program name. And this is the famous donkey game. So my nephew had tons of fun crashing the car into the donkey, not uh, playing the game to avoid crashing into the donkey, but this is IBM's basic and uh, the program for playing donkey. Okay, so there's a lot of flexibility that PC Transporter gave you to explore these different languages that were on the 8088 IBM. And this is a music demo is a bit off. Okay. That is the IBM uh, sound routine being used to generate musical notes and uh, the different song data. So this is how music was programmed using data statements. Okay, I'm not in Prodas, I am in IBM mode and files is the command to see your catalog and you can load a program. And now we are going to see IBM's version of the Amiga Ball. My monitor is displaying uh, grayscale. Um, I believe that the output is CGA compatible, but I'm not sure how I can make it show color. And I tried to install Microsoft Windows 1, but I believe I need to downgrade the DOS to something like DOS 3.3 in order to install Windows 1, because I'm using 6.22. In order to install Windows 1 on the Apple IIe PC transporter, I needed to create a hard disk with uh, IBM DOS 3.3 and uh, install a mouse driver. However, that mouse driver version 6.02 is too new for what I needed, and um, the mouse shows up but does not work. So to go to Windows, you change directory to Windows, and look how clean the Windows directory was. So if I try to move the mouse, it disappears, so the mouse driver is not the correct one, but you can use arrow keys. This is the game of Go, and um, you can get a hint, and it'll give you, you press space bar and get another hint. Or you can move yourself and try to find a valid move, like there. Alt uh, space bar gives you this menu, so let's open Apple space bar and that closes the application and returns you to the MS-DOS executive. This was your dumb terminal in Windows 1, so you can set up your communication settings and your terminal settings 
emulate a VT52 or an ANSI terminal. Your phone settings. And your communication baud rate, and parity, and shaking. You would have to configure drivers for those items. The win.ini file had configuration settings for Windows. So this is what came with Windows 1. Program extensions, extensions for various applications, and PIF files, program information files. This is how the um, PC transporter is configured. So it's making your A drive the three and a half, the B drive your trans drive, you could change that, and a hard drive. So if you configure your disk drives, you can change the Protoss file that is used for the hard disk. And it can pre-allocate up to 32 megabytes as a hard drive. Okay, so I tried to exit and run PC Transporter, and it's still hanging in that crashed Windows, and this option reboots. So that's your Control-Alt-Delete equivalent. And if you have a floppy in the drive, you're going to get this error message. So I eject the floppy, and now I'm showing you QBASIC, which was on a lot of PS2s. 
And this is a fun game. It's an artillery game, but you're a gorilla throwing bananas at your partner. Okay, so you're King Kong on the top of the roof, and you have to find the angle that will project your banana and kill the other gorilla. And your banana can hit the sun, and the sun's face changes when it hits. So there's collision detection. So that is so cute. Okay, now you had Lotus 1, 2, 3 before Excel. So you had macros. That was my first job out of college, writing Lotus macros. And people tried to store databases in spreadsheets, like they do today. But notice the dates have two digits. OK, there was a transfer utility provided by Applied Engineering to transfer your files between Prodos and MS-DOS. So here I am finding a file on my Prodos that I want to copy to an MS-DOS. So I could either put a floppy path like A colon or um, a hard drive path and you could replace it. And, uh, so that, that's one way. And then the other way is searching your MS-DOS directories. So this is an MS-DOS file. So I want to transfer this garage giveaway.txt file to my hard drive on Prodos. And then you give it the file type, and translate will translate the carriage return line feeds between IBM and Apple. OK, you had other Prodos commands available for cataloging, changing your prefix. OK, now we're going to look at CPM. So this is using the Microsoft soft card, and it has 56K available. That's a directory. Now, Microsoft BASIC was provided two versions. MBASIC has low-res but not high-res graphics, so you have 26K free. System returns to DOS. Returns to CPM's DOS. OK, the B drive has GBASIC with some sample programs. So when you run GBASIC, graphics BASIC, you get high-res graphics only 17k free. So now I'm going to load a sample program that draws high-res graphics. List it. See the HDR and it draws a piano and it's 80 column text so when it's done you'll see the note names in the 80 columns mode below it. So it's just like Apple high-res we have four lines of text below it. Okay, so you're in high res mode, so you have to go back to text mode. And then you can put another program. And it files gives you your directory. Okay, this is a demonstration of a random walk. So it's another high res program. And what it's simulating is um, using the random number generator to either go left or right and then drawing a histogram based on where you are on the uh, text screen. Okay, the next demo is WordStar. So my brother used this program to get through college. We had an NEC SpinWriter printer. You can see it there configured. It was actually a 77 hundred model. We had to use X on X off because uh, if you sent characters too fast the printer couldn't keep up. Okay, so you can log into another disk drive. CPM works best with two disk drives or more. I'm going to load a non-document file to show the equivalent of batch files in CPM. They're called submit files. So I created one for doing assembly. Okay, so what this is doing, it's erasing any backup file, assembling a file name, erasing the PRN, then load creates the COM file for it, and then it erases the hex output.
and you'll see a demonstration of this running later on. Okay, now I'm going to show you a sample document file. Okay, the name is fourth. You don't have to give an extension for your documents. But see, .op is omit page numbers, and that was a letter that I wrote. Okay. Now DDT is dynamic debugging tool. So that's how you ran your machine language and debugged it. And that was a dump of memory. Okay, so now we're going to show you, um, I have a bunch of assembler programs on here. I'm gonna copy from the A drive to the B, okay, from the B drive to the A drive. So I'm copying barber.asm from the B drive to the A drive. That's pip, and pip did a lot of other things as well. Okay, so now I have that file, barber.asm, and it's a machine language program that displays the whole character set. This is 80, um, Z80 assembler. Okay, now I'm gonna run the submit file. So I type submit, the submit file, and an input parameter that gets substituted in as dollar sign one and all those commands. You know, those commands are running automatically, just like an exec command in DOS or Prodos. So it's running the CPM assembler and assembling the program. And now it's erasing the PRN listing file. Now load is reading the hex module and creating a com. So you now have barber.com that you could run from the CPM prompt prompt and that runs and displays the ASCII character set continuously over and over. So you can also run Eliza on the IBM basic side and tell it your computers are getting old and it says do computers worry you? That was the response early in the days when Eliza was created and this is the listing of Eliza, so if you want, you can pause this video at any point and look at the code and all the messages that Eliza is programmed to respond to, like a Rogerian psychotherapist. So I hope you enjoyed this demo of the PC Transporter, the solution for people who didn't want to get an IBM and had an Apple IIe back in the 1990s.